What do Ghostface Killa, Paris Hilton, and Floyd Mayweather have in common? They're all trying to cash in on a new trend, ICOs. You've probably heard of an IPO before. An ICO is a little bit different. During an IPO, investors buy stock, which translates into ownership shares of that company. But in an ICO, an initial coin offering, they buy cryptocurrency tokens, like Bitcoin, but ones made by and for a specific company. Deciding which cryptocurrency to invest in, if any, can be a little bit confusing. There are more than a thousand cryptocurrencies in circulation right now, with more being introduced almost every day. Elliot Hahn, the managing director of the crypto-focused investment bank, the Argonne Group, says you can think of these digital tokens like the tokens you'd use to play an arcade game. During an ICO, there are two kinds of tokens you can buy. The first is a utility token. It's meant to be used on goods and services offered by the company that developed that cryptocurrency. This is just like when you go to an arcade and exchange money for gameplay tokens. They're meant to be used in the machines at that particular location and nowhere else. The second type of token is called a security token. That doesn't mean that they're safer. The security refers to financial securities. You're buying into the company like you would in an IPO, but you don't get the equity that comes with regular stock. So why would you buy in? The expectation is that those tokens will eventually be worth something once that company develops a way for people to spend them. If demand goes up, early investors can sell their tokens for a profit. But until that happens, you're taking a bit of a gamble. It would be like if your friend had plans to open a new arcade and he convinced you to buy tokens up front. He says there will only be a limited number in circulation and you trust that eventually those tokens will be worth something once the arcade opens. But right now, it's mostly wishful thinking. Also, until governments set up clear guidelines for how cryptocurrencies should be used, investing in them can be extremely risky. And as we've seen with Bitcoin, the market can be volatile. Singapore has published an ICO best practices guide, and China has temporarily banned them. The SEC has created a cyber unit to investigate misconduct, but ICOs still aren't as clearly regulated as IPOs in the US and most other countries, making it even easier for scammers to take advantage. But whether cryptocurrency is actually the future of money or just a passing fad, you'll be hearing a lot more about ICOs in the coming months, while investors try to cash in and lawmakers try and regulate them.